Yo guys, welcome back to a brand new video. Today, guys, we're going to be doing another ranking video. We're going to be ranking all the nine new tag team Pokemon that are going to be coming out within the new Sun and Moon set, Cosmic Eclipse. There are nine of them, and we're going to be ranking all of the nine. These videos, these ranking all GXs in the set, do really well on the channel. So if you guys want to show your support, just leave a like on the video and all that good stuff. And let me know if you agree with the ranking. And uh, before we get the video, of course, shout out to our sponsor, Car Carver and TCG. As always, guys, if you're ever looking to get your hands on any PDCGO pack codes, if you're trying to get hidden fates codes or, you know, team up codes, unified minds codes, and you can get them over at Cargo TCG. They do have a Pokemon TCGs and like another like singles website down below too. Uh, so if you're looking for PCGO codes or Pokemon singles, go over to Cargo TCG. Use my discount code code LDF at the checkout to get yourself a 5% discount on your order. So yeah, without further ado, guys, we're gonna get into the ranking, ranking all nine new tag team Pokemon coming out in Cosmic Eclipse. All right, coming in at our number nine ranking, guys, we have the uh, a triple tag team Pokemon. Yeah, starting off the list strong, eh? We got Togepi and Cleffa and Igglybuff GX, and unfortunately, this card kind of gets the unlucky case of being very just niche, and there's better fairy Pokemon. So you got the attack Rolling Panic doing 120, flip a coin, take a Tails to do 30 more damage. Um, we do have Will coming in this set, which allows you to like reflip your coins, uh, but even then, it's still not worth it. Your damage output is just not good enough, and there's better fairy Pokemon like Gardevoir, Sylveon, and Whimsicott GX, which can do just a better job. Um, but I think the main thing why people are getting hyped over this card is for that Tag Team GX attack, Supreme Puff. So for two fairies, um, you take another turn after this one. But then, here's the thing. If you have at least 14 extra fairies, so you have to have 16 fairy energy on this Pokemon. And if you do have 16 fairy energy on it, your opponent shuffles all of their bench Pokemon, all cards attached to it, into their deck. Which is pretty insane. If your opponent has like a bench full of everything, you just put them all back in the deck and then all they have is they're active. And not to mention, you do of course get an extra turn out of that so you can go have another turn and maybe knock out their active Pokemon to win the game. Now obviously the main issue here is you need 16 energy which is like almost like impossible to like get going. There's, some, there's no way you're going to get 16 energy and play in standard anyways like that easily. Now in Expanded there are some talks to this card, maybe with like Togekiss, um, possibly. Um, you know, you have Xerneas with Geomancy, so there are some ways in Expanded this card could work, but like even then, I think it's too niche. Um, it's definitely the worst tag team in the set in my opinion. It's the funniest one. It's got the most interesting tag team attack. It's the most cost efficient attack I've ever seen. 16 energy is a lot. Uh, but unfortunately, it's probably not going to see any play because uh, it needs too much energy. And its first attack is also just really weak and not good enough to make it work by itself. But if someone makes this card work and like Expanded, this card could be a hilarious meme. But that's why it's coming at the worst spot on the list because it definitely is the worst tag team in the set all right guys coming in at our number eight ranking spot this is going to be um venusaur and snivy tag team gx so this card does have a unique ability in the form of the fact that it has a ability that has the effect of gusting which is good unfortunately though this card is kind of underwhelming in every other category now grass types are obviously right now kind of on the back burner literally because of how good fire is and fire will only get stronger in this set with the inclusion of the new Charizard GX and of course the new Volcarona so fire types are obviously still going to be extremely good which just kind of makes you know grass types not very good to begin with and Venusaur just kind of just doesn't I don't know if it's good enough so it has the ability Shining Vine where once you're in turn if this is your active Pokemon so keep that in mind it has to be your active when you touch grass energy from your hand to it you may switch one of your points bench Pokemon with their active so you pretty much have to rely on it being in the active, and that's not the easiest thing to do with not, without Guzma in the format. You know, it's not possible for this to be in the active. It's attack forest dump. Um, does only 160 damage for 4 energy. There's no effects, just 160, which is pretty underwhelming. You're like just, you know, only knocking out the Den AGX and Jirachis pretty much. Um, so unfortunately this attack is not very good. Um, but you do have Solar Plant, which for 3 colorless energy does 50 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon. Okay, that's actually not bad. 50, you know, is pretty nice. If this Pokemon has extra, 2 extra energy on it, you heal all damage from all your Pokemon. So there are some cool effects you can do with this card. Uh, the ability is really cool, and the GX stack can be kind of nice too. Unfortunately though, it's just kind of underwhelming. The fact that it has to be in your active spot to make that ability work is not worth it. Um, I don't know if this card will be good enough in like an Alolan Executor Rowlet deck. Um, I feel like this card just doesn't have what it takes. I'd honestly rather just play the Venusaur Celebi Pokemon because it's, you know, a little better to attack with. Um, but that ability might, you know, see some play if someone can figure out different ways to make it work. Because Gusting is something that, you know, is sort of limited right now through only Custom Catcher and the new Great Catcher card we're going to be getting. 
But yeah, unfortunately, just Venusaur and Celebi, uh, or Venusaur and Snivy, sorry, just doesn't cut it. Um, and I just feel like it's not very good. Uh, the ability, though, definitely might work in a grass box deck, but outside of that, you're probably not going to use it. So let's move on to our next ranking spot. All right, guys, coming in at our number seven spot on the list, we're finally getting to the Pokemon that are most likely going to see play and will be good. Um, but I think, like, at the bottom, like, the worst of them all is going to be Naganadel and Guzzlord Tag Team GX. Now, this card I don't think is bad at all. Like, I actually think this card will see play, but how much play will it see? So, it's got 280 HP, and it is a Dragon Pokemon, which is something to consider, because you can, of course, use Ends Resolve to build this card up. Uh, it also can be a new Malamar partner, too. So... Uh, you got the ability Violent Appetite. Once during your turn before you attack, you may discard a Pokemon from your hand. If you do, heal 60 from this Pokemon. Having 280 HP and being able to use that ability does mean, of course, you can use Great Potions and Mixed Herbs to help make this card really tanky uh, by healing it all the time. You get the attack Jet Pierce for Psychic and Dark, and that's not bad. Again, you can use this with Malamar and just run Dark Energy instead of, you know, like fighting and metal like you would do with the other Malamar variants. Um, you only do 180 damage, so you're not going to hit super hard. You're going to knock out a fair amount of normal GXs like Belcephalon and Dedenne. Um, and you're going to two-shot mostly anything. And then you have Chaotic Order. Now, I like this GX deck quite a bit. So for Colossus Energy, you turn all your prizes face up, so you get like a free town map. But if this Pokemon has at least a f one extra Psychic and Dark on it, take two prizes. So just out of nowhere, you can just take two prizes. That is really good. That's like Burst GX, but a little bit better because you're taking an extra prize. And that's why I like that Jix deck. Now, again, there's going to be two ways you can play this. You can play with Malamar, and you can also play it with Ends Resolve. Now, I had to play at the bottom because I feel like it's not going to be as good as the other tag teams on this list. Uh, but I do think this card is still decent regardless. I, I still think this is a good card. It's just, yeah, I don't think it'll see as much play as the other tag teams I mentioned earlier. Um, or I'm going to be mentioning. But, yeah, definitely a good card. Uh, it's going to be, it's obviously better than, you know, the other two Pokemon like Speedosaur and Snivy and Jigglypuff, Iglybuff, and Cleffa GX. This card is going to see a bit of play. It just depends on how people are going to play it. It's either going through End Resolve or through Malamar. Other than that, this is a good card, and I like it quite a bit. It's going to be fun to look at when it comes out. And, uh, yeah, we're going to move into our number six spot now on the list. All right, guys, moving into the number six spot on the list is going to go to Blastoise and Piplup Tag Team GX. Now, this was a pretty big debate in my head. I didn't know if I wanted to put again El Guzzlord here or if I wanted to put Blastoise and Piplup here. I decided on Blastoise Piplup because I feel like it is going to be the better of the two um, because it is a water type tag team. And that is very crucial considering fire types are ridiculously powered, overpowered right now. With the new Volcarona coming out, fire types are only going to get even better. I um, mean, of course, with the other new tag team. Um, but Blastoise and Piplup can help put them in their, you know, tracks. Now, it's Attack Splash Maker. It does 150 for three energy. So already you're going to two-shot mostly anything, and you're also going to knock out most fire tag tag team Pokemon in one hit. Um, and uh, you may attach up to three water energies from your hand to your Pokemon in any way you like. If you do, heal 50 damage from this Pokemon for each card you attach in this way. So there's a few ways you can use this attack. Obviously, you can use it with like Energy Spinner, you can use it with Viridian Forest, you can combo it with potentially um, Lady. And of course with like Switch Raft and the new... Um, Lana and Mallow card, I think it's what it's called. You have a lot of support for healing your water Pokemon. And this card does have 270 HP, so it's very bulky. Um, and it's going to one-shot those fire types. Now, how are you going to power this thing up is kind of the main question. Of course, there's a few ways you can do it. You can use it with Starmie GX. You can use it in, you know, Blastoise. Or this will be the new face of Quagneg, which is going to be the most likely case because this can get energy in play for Quagneg decks. So, yeah, this is probably going to be the new face of Quagnag. And I do like this card. Just being able to do 3 for 150 is insane. That attack splash maker is also pretty bonkers. And your Ajax stack bubble launcher is pretty good, too. For 3 waters, you do 100. If your opponent's active, your opponent's active is not paralyzed. But if you have at least 3 extra water on it, it does 150 more damage. So, you can do 250 damage. So, if you ever need to just pop off and maybe take out, like, a Picarom with 6 energy, you can do that. The paralysis is also pretty nice, too. But yeah, I just really like this card. It's going to be definitely like the new face of Quagnag. And of course, it's just a really good attacker against fire decks. And we really do need more better water type Pokemon in order to counteract this insane fire meta. And Blastoise and Piplup, it's a good start. And yeah, I like this card a lot. It's going to be the new face of Quagnag. And it'll see a lot of play outside of that too. Combo this with like Vaporeon GX, Switch Trap, Malo, Lana. You can have a really good healing loop going with like multiple, you know, of these guys in play at once. So yeah, great card. I like it quite a bit. Let's move on to our top five in the ranking. All right, guys, in our top five here, we are going to start things off with Charizard and Brakeson Tag Team GX. So 
At first, I was thinking that this card honestly wasn't very good, and then I really put some thought into its attack, Brilliant Flare, and I was like, you know what, maybe this card is better than expected. Now, obviously, this card is going to see play in Reshizard. Um, I don't know why we needed another Charizard tag team, but, you know, we got it. I mean, we have another Venusaur tag team, I guess. But mainly, this card is going to see play in Reshizard. But this thing could honestly work by itself, too. So that attack, Brilliant Flare, for 4 energy, does 180. So it's kind of off-putting when, you know, Reshizard's Flare Strike does 230 or 200 damage with the other like the GX attack 180 is like on the weaker side but you are able to search your deck for up to three cards and put them into your hand so the idea with this attack is if you use it with like a greens engine you can get like anything you want you can get your mixed herbs your great potions your custom catchers your great catchers and that's kind of the appeal to that attack being able to get any three cards you want is honestly really really powerful you can get fire energy so you can use it with Volcarona you can use it with nine tails um, so there's a lot of things you can do with that um, attack and getting any three cards you want honestly is way better than I expected and just really putting some thought into how this card will see play has made me just realize that this card is actually good and will probably see play as its own archetype and it will definitely see play as a one of in Reshizard decks whether it be in Abilities Art or Green's Reshizard. Um, and we have the attack Crimson Flame Pillar GX attach five basic fires from your discard pile to your Pokemon anyway like if this Pokemon has at least one extra energy on it your opponent is now burned and confused not a bad attack getting the extra energy back into play is honestly really powerful so yeah Charizard breaks in it will definitely see play now it's a little outclassed by Reshizard in my opinion because Reshizard just has the better damage it has better attacks overall in terms of you know taking knockouts but being able to do 180 and get any three cards you want is powerful when you consider what you can grab and what you can set up for the following turn so, yeah, this card definitely is good, and I think we'll see quite a bit of play, and is another amazing new Fire-type tag team Pokemon. And it comes in at number 5. And coming in at our number 4 ranking, guys, is going to go to Solgaleo and Lunala Tag Team GX. So, right off the bat, this is going to be a great new card to try out in Malamar. Now, this card, I think, is pretty powerful. Now, I don't think it's top 3 material, but it's definitely good. So, you got the attack, Cosmic Burn, which is 230 damage. 4 energy and you can't use cosmic burn during your next turn but the main idea of this card is obviously to use it in malamar um 230 is really powerful that's a lot of damage malamar doesn't really have that type of damage output um as it you know kind of once did so being able to do that is really good now i think that gx attack is what makes it pretty nice so you got the attack light of the protector doing 200 damage for three energy if you play a lily's full force so you don't need the extra energy you just need to have a you know play the Lily, the new Lily supporter card in this new set. And if you do play it, prevent all effects of attacks include damage done to each of your Pokemon. So essentially, you can get an extra turn of being immune. And that is extremely powerful. If the opponent is going to be doing no damage to your Pokemon, um, that is just nuts. Um, if this attack knocks something out and they can't that's like and they can't damage you, that's potentially you can take four prizes before they can even damage you again. And that is really good. So this thing is extremely powerful, and not to mention with Giratina's Distortion Door, of course with Spell Tag. It's not too hard to reach high numbers for this card anyways, like 230 damage alongside a Spell Tag is enough to knock out a 270 HP Tag Team Pokemon, and that is really powerful. I do like this card a lot, I think it is definitely going to see play in Malamar for sure. Um, now Lily's Full Force isn't even that bad, you know, if you play a couple in Malamar, and you use it alongside of this card, you get an insane effect of being able to have nothing on your board take any damage. So they can't knock out Malamars, they can't knock out the Sogaleo Lunala Tag Team. So yeah, great card, and definitely will see play in Malamar for sure, and that's why it's coming in at number 4. So now we're going to get into the top 3 guys, here we go. Alright guys, coming in at our number 3 spot is going to go to Mega Low Punny and Jigglypuff GX. Now this might be like slightly controversial as to why this card is ranked so high, but honestly this is this is an amazing card um so you got the attack jumping balloon which does 60 damage and does 60 more damage for each of your opponent's pokemon gx's and ex's in play and you got to consider the dene's you got to consider jirachi you know zeraora pikaram reshizard there are going to be decks out there that are going to be smacked really hard by jumping balloon um and the fact that this card is a coast pokemon it means it can go in any deck you want and that is honestly why i have it here in my opinion it's like Eevee and Snorlax GX, but like this card is just infinitely better than that card because your damage output can be really high, and you even have an amazing GX attack too, and it's only going to need 3 energy, so it's actually a lot more cheaper. So, for 3 energy, and it can go in like most Sandy decks, you want to play the Malamar, you know, Welder, Reshizard decks, 
you want to play it in Mewtwo and Mew, if you want to play it in Picarom, you can. That's the beauty of this card. You can play it in Quagnag, just to name a few options. Um, and the GX deck is also good too. Puffy Smashers GX for one energy. Your opponent's deck is now asleep. But if this Pokemon has at least four extra energy on it, does 200 damage to one your opponent's bench Pokemon. So you can finish off a tag team Pokemon. You can knock out a Dedenne. You can knock out, um, you know, Bolcephalon GX, just to name a few Pokemon. So yeah, this card is great, and I really like it a lot. I think this card will see play. Um, it's more or less like a one-of tech card. Obviously, this won't be an archetype by itself, but the fact that it's splashable in like anything, in my opinion, is just what makes it so good. Like It's one of those cards you can put in any deck you want that has good energy acceleration, and it will be amazing because it can do a lot of damage. It will punish people for benching a lot of tag teams. And you got to think of other stuff too, like you know, Volcarona is going to see a lot of play. Obviously, if your opponent has multiple dead enemies in play, you're already going to be doing, you know, the extra, you know, you're going to be doing 180 damage. So, like, this card is just really good, in my opinion, and um, it will see play. It will see a lot of play. It can go in, like, almost anything, and that's why I like it so much. The GX attack is also really good, too. Um, it punishes you if you don't have a Mew in play. So, yeah, great card, and I think it definitely deserves a spot at number three on the ranking, because this card is honestly really insane and kind of slept on, in my opinion. So yeah, let's move on to the top two on the ranking. And coming in at our number two spot on the ranking goes to Arceus and Dialga and Palkia Tag Team GX. So this one might be controversial too. Now some people immediately don't think this card is very good because it's clunky energy cost. Now I'm going to tell you right now, this card is going to see a lot of play in my opinion. This card is really good. The main thing this card does is the fact that it has a just absolute bonkers GX attack and this card also gets powered up very easily by ends resolve and that's why I like it so much so it's got 280 HP um, you have the attack ultimate ray which does 150 damage for a water a metal and a colorless you do 150 search your deck for up to three basic energies and attach them to your Pokemon any way you like now the idea is you're doing 150 damage so you're not very you know you're not hitting as much damage as you want but it's energy acceleration combo this with maybe super scoop up combo this with you know healing cards combo this with other attackers that you can just easily power up through this attack and you already have a, a cool attack it's basically obviously full blitz but for any energy but then you have the gx tech altered creation gx for a metal energy for the rest of the game your pokemon's attacks do 30 more damage to your points active so choice ban for the rest of the game that's amazing that is really good having the choice ban for the rest of the game is super powerful but here's the kicker if this Pokemon has at least one extra water energy on it, when your opponent's item is knocked out with damage from those attacks, take one more prize card. This GX attack is ridiculously good. And again, this card easily gets powered up through Ends Resolve. Um, you just play an Ends Resolve and you know you power this thing up possibly. Turn one Altered Creation, turn one Ultimate Ray possibly. Both are really good options and um, you're going to put a lot of pressure on the opponent. I really think this card is what just good mainly because of Ends Resolve. Without Ends Resolve, this card would be pretty sub par and mediocre but end resolve makes it good you have a really good gx attack that is insane um and then of course you have ultimate ray which is nice too just being able to build stuff up on the backup burner is really good so yeah this card i like quite a bit and it will without a doubt see quite a bit of play in my opinion i mean that gx attack alone i think some people will toy with and you know find a really good way to make that gx attack really busted but yeah rcs dialga and palkia tag team gx i definitely think is deserving of its number two spot on this ranking and now without further ado we're gonna get to the number one spot on the ranking which is pretty obvious what it is because i haven't talked about the card yet but yeah here we go all right and coming in at our number one spot guys what else could it be but other than reshi ram and zekrom egg team gx yeah this card it's great so what makes it so good is the attacks that it has and the support that it has now, like Arceus and Dialga, and again, El Guzzlord, I've talked about how the new Ends Resolve supporter card is going to make these new Dragon-type tag teams playable. And boy, is it going to make this card playable. So, straight off the bat, this card will be good with Naganadels. So, that attack, Fabled Flare Bolts. Um, I like the original Japan version, which was, I think, like Dream Flare, something like that, which was just a really cool name. Um, but yeah, Fable Flare Bolts, 90 damage for a Fire and a Lightning Energy, discard out a 3 in any combination of Basic Fire and Basic Lightning Energies from your bench Pokemon, this attack does 90 damage for each card you discard this way. And those are the two best support types right now in the form of Welder and the form of Tapu Koko Prism Star, which is already amazing. Now, obviously the way you're going to play this card is going to be through Ends Resolve and Naganadel's Charging Up, and this thing just, just runs people over. It does 270 damage, I'm pretty sure 
for all three energy you discard it and again if you combo this with three nagandals with charging up you can just keep doing that every single turn this card can get powered up through welder and get powered up through coco prism and get powered up through ends resolve now that attack alone would make this card good but then you have its gx attack which is also insane so cross break for two fires and two lightning energies this attack does 170 damage to one of your opponent's bench pokemon so that's already really good if they don't have a mew on the bench you should easily get a knockout but if you play an end resolve from your hand during this turn this attack does 170 damage to one of your opponent's other bench pokemon so you get to do 170 damage to two of your opponent's bench pokemon now unlike tag bolt you don't get to hit the active to knock them out which kind of is a downside but doing 170 damage to two of your opponent's bench pokemon is amazing because it's going to cripple them and it's going to allow you to take multiple prizes in one turn which is why this card is good um yeah this is an amazing gx card this is honestly going to make fairy type pokemon like already become popular again and like you know fairy type is going to be more relevant thanks to like this card and of course the dialga and arceus card that's also probably going to be really good too fairy types are going to be back on the forefront so keep an eye out for that but other than that yeah this card is just really powerful its attacks are ridiculously good it's got a lot of good support it's got the two best types in the game in the form of its own attack costs lightning and fire Fire being the big one because this card gets powered up through Welder. Um, you pay this with Naganadel and you're going to be doing ridiculous amounts of damage. So yeah, this is most likely going to become one of the new BDIFs. Reshiram and Zekrom GX is insanely good. And without a doubt, the arguably the new best deck in the format. Just I'm going to be ballsy enough to say that it's going to be the new best deck. And if you even play this with like Dragon Talent, we even have like Altaria. Um, this will like let you hit even higher numbers so if you're you know just short on the numbers to knock out a more tankier tag team just play stuff like dragon talent or you know play altaria and you're going to be doing the extra damage you need to do to knock out stuff so yeah reshi ram and zekrom gx insanely busted so yeah that is going to be it for the ranking video ranking all nine new tag teams in cosmic eclipse cosmic eclipse is a great set a lot of good stuff coming in the set. A lot of the new tag team supporters are really cool. We're getting some really good new item cards, like the new tag card that allows you to search for tag team cards. And of course, um, the new Great Catcher card is really good too. A lot of good new supporters in the form of Roxy, Lily's Best Effort, Ends Resolve is really busted too. So yeah, overall, this set is going to be amazing. It's a great set. There's a lot of good cards. And Reshi Ram and Zekrom GX is the forefront of the set and is going to be the best card to get in the set. And it's probably going to become the new best deck in the format. So thanks for watching today's PDCGO ranking video. I say PDCGO because I got PDCGO open. But yeah, thanks for watching today's ranking video, guys. I love doing these ranking videos where we rank all the tag teams in the new sets because they do really well on the channel. And they're also just fun to make. Um, I just really like ranking stuff, you know. It's just fun to do. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think of the ranking video. Do you agree with the ranking? Um, what do you guys think? Thanks for watching the video. Subscribe down the road to reaching 6,000 subscribers. Make sure to check out that sponsor, Kirk Evan TCG2. Use my discount code CODELDF if you pick something up from there. Follow me on Twitter down below too. Thank you guys later. Bye-bye.